Welcome to English Story Podcast. I, I am Max. This is my English story. I did not know any English. When people spoke English, I could not understand. The words sounded strange. I felt lost and confused. But now, I speak well. I can talk with friends, read books, and write sentences. It was not easy. But I did it. Let me take you back to the beginning. I remember the first time I heard English. It was on TV. The characters were speaking a language I didn't understand. They laughed, talked, and seemed happy. But I couldn't join in. I wanted to understand. I wanted to be part of their world. At school, English was a subject. The teacher wrote words on the board. She said them out loud, but to me, they were just sounding. I couldn't make sense of them. My classmates seemed to get it. They nodded, repeated the words, and even made sentences. But I sat quietly, hoping the teacher wouldn't call on me. I was afraid to speak. What if I said it wrong? What if they laughed at me? I did not know any English. Now, I speak well. One day, I decided I wanted to change. I wanted to learn English. I wanted to understand those TV shows, talk with my friends, and do well in school. I knew it wouldn't be easy, but I was ready to try. First, I talked to my parents. I told them I wanted to learn English. They were supportive. They said learning a new language was a good idea. They encouraged me to start small and not give up. That gave me hope. I started with the basics. The alphabet was my first step. A, B, C. I practiced each letter. I wrote them down one by one. At first, my letters were shaky. Some were too big, others too small. But I kept practicing. Soon, my letters looked just right. I was proud of my progress. Next, I learned simple words. Cat, dog, apple. These were words I saw every day. I made flashcards with pictures and words. I looked at them often. I said the words out loud. Slowly, the words started to make sense. I could see a cat and say cat. I could hold an apple and say apple. It felt good to know these words. Practicing every day was important. I set aside time each day to study. Sometimes I was tired. Sometimes I wanted to play instead. But I remembered my goal. I wanted to learn English. So I practiced every day. I learned a little more. I started to make sentences. I am Alex. This is a book. These were simple sentences, but they meant a lot to me. They were my first steps in speaking English. I practiced with my friends. They were kind and patient. They corrected me when I made mistakes. They cheered me on when I got it right. Their support made a big difference. Speaking out loud was scary at first. I was afraid of making mistakes. But I learned that mistakes were okay. They were part of learning. Each mistake taught me something new. Over time, I became less shy. I spoke more and more. I felt my confidence growing. Reading and listening were also important. I started with children's books. They were simple and had pictures. I could look at the pictures and understand the story. I read the words out loud. I repeated them until they sounded right. I listened to English songs. Music made learning fun. I sang along even if I didn't understand all the words. Slowly, the songs made more sense. I watched English cartoons. The characters spoke clearly. I could follow their stories. Watching cartoons helped me learn new words and phrases. Writing was another step. I started with simple sentences. I like cats. Today is sunny. I wrote in a journal every day. My sentences were short, but they helped me practice. I paid attention to spelling. I wanted to write the words correctly. 
Spelling was tricky at first. Some words were hard to spell, but I practiced. I used a dictionary to check my words. Each day, my writing improved. I took small steps. I didn't try to learn everything at once. I focused on one thing at a time. This made learning easier. Each small step added up. Over time, I saw big improvements. I joined an English club. We met every week. We talked about different topics. We played games in English. The club was fun and helped me practice speaking. I made new friends who were also learning English. We helped each other. We shared tips and encouraged one another. I found language partners online. We talked through video calls. They wanted to learn my language, and I wanted to learn English. We helped each other. It was like having a friend to study with. We practiced speaking and listening. We corrected each other's mistakes. This helped me a lot. I asked for help when I didn't understand. I asked my teacher, my friends, and my parents. They were always willing to help. They explained things to me. They gave me tips and resources. Asking for help was important. It showed me that I didn't have to learn alone. Learning English changed my life. It opened new doors. I could talk with more people. I could understand more things. I felt more confident. I was proud of my progress. Now I want to help others. I want to share my story. I hope it will inspire you. If you are learning English, know that you can do it. Start small. Practice every day. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. Ask for help when you need it. Keep going, even when it's hard. You can do it, too. Start small and keep going. Thank you for listening to my story. Good luck with your English. Chapter 1 The Beginning At first, English was hard. I did not understand words. They seemed like a puzzle with no solution. When I heard people speaking English, it felt like they were talking in a secret code. I tried to listen carefully, but the sounds were strange. They did not make sense to me. I felt frustrated. In school, English class was the most difficult for me. The teacher would speak in English, and I could only catch a few words. She would ask questions, and I didn't know the answers. I felt embarrassed. I wanted to hide or disappear. My classmates seemed to understand everything. They could read, write, and speak in English. But I struggled with every word. When we had to read out loud, I was scared. My heart would race, and my hands would shake. I worried about making mistakes. I worried that others would laugh at me. Sometimes I pretended to be sick, so I wouldn't have to go to English class. But deep down, I knew I couldn't run away forever. I had to face my fear. One day, I decided to start with the basics. I realized that I needed to build a strong foundation. So, I began with the alphabet. A, B, C. I took a piece of paper and wrote down each letter. I practiced writing them again and again. At first, my letters were uneven. Some were too big, others too small. But I kept practicing. Slowly, my letters became neater. I felt a sense of accomplishment. Learning the alphabet was like opening a door. Each letter was a key. Together, they formed the building blocks of words. I found joy in this simple practice. It was fun to see how letters combined to create new sounds and meanings. I used flashcards to help me remember the letters. I made my own flashcards with colorful markers. On one side, I wrote the letter. On the other side, I drew a picture of something that started with that letter. A for apple, B for ball, C for cat. I looked at these flashcards every day. I said the letters out loud. I traced them with my finger. The more I practiced, the more familiar they became. I also watched educational videos for kids. 
They were designed to teach the alphabet in a fun way. There were songs, dances, and animations. I sang along with the songs. I followed the dances. These videos made learning enjoyable. They helped me remember the letters in a playful manner. Learning English made me feel many emotions. At first, I felt nervous every time I tried to learn a new word. I worried about getting it wrong. I was afraid of making mistakes. I was afraid of being laughed at. But I knew that if I let fear stop me, I would never learn. So I tried to be brave. I felt a sense of excitement when I made progress. Each time I learned a new letter or word, I felt proud. These small victories gave me confidence. They showed me that I could do it. They motivated me to keep going. There were times when I felt overwhelmed. English has many rules and exceptions. Sometimes it seemed like for every rule I learned, there was an exception that confused me. I felt like I was taking one step forward and two steps back. But I reminded myself that learning is a journey. It takes time and effort. I had to be patient with myself. Support from my family and friends made a big difference. My parents encouraged me every day. They told me that it was okay to make mistakes. They told me that every mistake was a step towards learning. Their words gave me strength. My friends helped me practice. They were patient and kind. They corrected me gently. They cheered me on. Their support made me feel less alone. I also learned to celebrate my progress. Every small step was a victory. I celebrated when I learned a new letter. I celebrated when I wrote a word correctly. I celebrated when I spoke a sentence without hesitation. These celebrations kept me motivated. They reminded me of how far I had come. I did not give up, no matter how hard it was. I kept going. I reminded myself of my goal. I wanted to learn English. I wanted to understand and be understood. I wanted to connect with others. This goal kept me focused. It gave me the determination to keep trying. Looking back, I see how important these early steps were. They were the foundation of my learning journey. They taught me patience, perseverance, and the value of small victories. They showed me that learning is not a straight path. There are ups and downs, but with determination and support, anything is possible. Now, when I speak English, I remember those early days. I remember the challenges and the small victories. They are a part of my story. They remind me of where I started and how far I have come. They give me the confidence to keep learning and growing. If you are starting to learn English, remember that it's okay to feel nervous. It's okay to make mistakes. Every step, no matter how small, is progress. Celebrate your victories. Ask for help when you need it. Keep going. Even when it's hard, you can do it, just like I did. Chapter 2. Building vocabulary learning simple words was my next big step after mastering the alphabet. I was ready to build my vocabulary. I started with the words that I encountered every day. These words were familiar and easy to remember. They formed the foundation of my English learning journey. The first words I learned were simple and common. Cat, dog, apple. These words were all around me. I saw cats and dogs in my neighborhood. I ate apples as a snack. Connecting the words to real objects helped me remember them. I could look at a cat and say cat. I could see a dog and say dog. I could hold an apple and say apple. These simple words gave me confidence. They were like stepping stones. Each word I learned was a step forward. It felt good to know these words. They were the building blocks of sentences. With each new word, my understanding of English grew. Learning these words also made my everyday life easier. I could use them in conversations. When I saw a cat, I could tell my friends, 
Look, a cat. When I wanted an apple, I could ask, Can I have an apple? These small achievements were exciting. They showed me that I was making progress. Flashcards were one of my favorite tools for learning new words. They were simple but very effective. I made my own flashcards at home. I used colorful markers and index cards. On one side of the card, I wrote the English word. On the other side, I drew a picture of the object. For example, for the word cat, I drew a picture of a cat. Making the flashcards was fun. It was a creative activity that helped me remember the words better. The process of writing the word and drawing the picture reinforced my learning. Each time I used the flashcards, I felt more confident. I used my flashcards every day. I carried them with me wherever I went. During breaks at school, I would pull out a few cards and go through them. At home, I would review them before bed. Repetition was key. The more I looked at the flashcards, the more the words stuck in my mind. I also played games with the flashcards. Sometimes I would shuffle them and try to guess the word just by looking at the picture. Other times, I would challenge myself to write sentences using the words on the flashcards. These games made learning fun and kept me engaged. My friends joined in too. We would quiz each other using the flashcards. They helped me pronounce the words correctly and use them in sentences. Their support and encouragement made a big difference. Learning together was motivating and enjoyable. Practice was essential in my journey to build vocabulary. Every day, I dedicated time to practicing English. Consistency was important. I knew that to remember the words, I had to use them regularly. Practice turned the new words into part of my everyday language. I started by speaking the words out loud. I would look at an object and say its name in English. If I saw a cat, I would say cat. If I saw a dog, I would say dog. This simple exercise helped me associate the words with the objects. It made the words feel more real and meaningful. Writing was another way I practiced. I kept a journal where I wrote simple sentences using the new words. The cat is sleeping. I have an apple. The dog is barking. Writing these sentences helped me understand how to use the words in context. It also improved my spelling and grammar. Listening was also a big part of my practice routine. I listened to English songs and watched English cartoons. These activities made learning fun. I sang along to the songs, even if I didn't understand all the words. Over time, I started recognizing the words I had learned. Watching cartoons was helpful too. The characters spoke clearly, and the stories were easy to follow. I could hear the words in action and understand how they were used in conversations. Repetition was key to remembering the new words. I repeated them every day. I used them in different contexts. I spoke them, wrote them, and listened to them. Each repetition made the words more familiar. They became part of my active vocabulary. I also set small goals for myself. Each week, I aimed to learn a certain number of new words. I wrote them down and checked them off as I learned them. These goals kept me focused and motivated. Seeing my progress on paper was satisfying. It showed me that I was moving forward. Challenges were part of the process too. Some words were harder to remember than others. When I struggled with a word, I didn't give up. I found new ways to practice. I used it in more sentences. I drew pictures of it. I asked my friends for help. Persistence paid off. Eventually, the word would stick. I also used technology to aid my learning. There were many apps and websites designed for language learners. These tools provided interactive exercises and games. They helped me practice vocabulary in a fun and engaging way.
I could learn at my own pace and track my progress. One of my favorite apps was a language learning app that used spaced repetition. It reminded me to review words at specific intervals. This method ensured that I didn't forget the words I had learned. The app also had quizzes and challenges that tested my knowledge. It made learning feel like a game. My family supported my practice efforts too. My parents encouraged me to speak English at home. They asked me to name objects around the house. They listened to me read my journal entries. Their encouragement and interest made me feel proud of my efforts. Building vocabulary was a gradual process. It took time and effort, but with each new word I learned, I felt more confident. My vocabulary grew, and so did my ability to communicate in English. The simple words I started with were just the beginning. They laid the foundation for more complex learning. Looking back, I realize how important those early words were. They were the first steps on my journey to mastering English. They gave me the confidence to keep going. They showed me that learning a new language is possible, one word at a time. If you are learning English, start with simple words. Use flashcards to help you remember them. Practice every day. Speak, write, and listen. Repetition is key. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. Each mistake is a learning opportunity. Celebrate your progress, no matter how small. Keep going, and you will see improvement. You can do it, just like I did. Chapter 3 Basic sentences after building my vocabulary with simple words, I was ready to start constructing sentences. This was an exciting step. It felt like I was putting the pieces of a puzzle together. Each word I learned was a piece, and now I could start forming complete thoughts. I began with the simplest sentences. I am Alex. This is a book. These sentences were straightforward and easy to understand. They were short but powerful. For the first time, I could express myself in English. It was a thrilling feeling. To construct sentences, I needed to understand basic grammar. I learned about subjects and predicates. I learned that every sentence needs a subject, the person or thing doing the action, and a predicate, the action or description. And I am Alex, I is the subject, and am Alex is the predicate. And this is a book, this is the subject, and is a book, is the predicate. I practiced making sentences every day. I used the words I had learned and put them into simple sentences. The cat is black. I have an apple. She is my friend. Writing these sentences helped me understand how words fit together. It also improved my grammar and spelling. I also learned about articles, a, n, and the. These small words are important in English. They help to clarify which specific thing we are talking about. A cat means any cat, while the cat means a specific cat. An apple means any apple, while the apple means a specific apple. Understanding articles helped me make more precise sentences. To reinforce my learning, I wrote in a journal every day. I wrote simple sentences about my life. Today is sunny. I went to school. My mom made dinner. This daily practice helped me become more comfortable with writing in English. It also allowed me to review and reinforce the vocabulary I had learned. Speaking practice was a crucial part of my learning journey. Constructing sentences on paper was one thing, but speaking them out loud was another challenge. I needed to practice speaking to improve my pronunciation and fluency. I started by speaking to myself in my room. I would say the sentences I had written, I am Alex. This is a book. Hearing the words out loud helped me become more familiar with their sounds. It also helped me practice my pronunciation. At first, I felt silly talking to myself, but I soon realized it was a valuable exercise. Next, 
I practiced speaking with my friends. They were very supportive. They understood that I was learning and were patient with me. We would have simple conversations in English. They asked me questions, and I tried to answer in complete sentences. How are you? I am fine. What is this? This is a pin. These conversations were short, but helpful. They gave me the confidence to speak more. My friends also corrected my mistakes. If I said something wrong, they would gently correct me. It's not, he is a friend of me. It's, he is my friend. These corrections were invaluable. They helped me learn the correct way to say things. Over time, I made fewer mistakes and spoke more fluently. I also joined a language exchange group. This group was made up of people who wanted to practice different languages. Some were learning English, while others were learning my native language. We took turns speaking in each language. This gave me the opportunity to practice English with new people. It was a bit intimidating at first, but everyone was friendly and supportive. In the language exchange group, we played speaking games. One game was to describe a picture in English. I would look at a picture and try to describe what I saw. There is a cat on the table. The boy is playing with a ball. This game helped me practice using different words and constructing sentences on the spot. Another game was role-playing. We pretended to be in situations like ordering food at a restaurant or asking for directions. I would like a sandwich, please. Where is the nearest bus stop? These role-playing exercises were practical and fun. They helped me practice speaking in real-life situations. Overcoming shyness was one of the biggest challenges I faced in learning to speak English. At first, I was very shy. I was afraid of making mistakes. I was afraid that people would laugh at me or think I was not smart. This fear made it hard for me to speak fluently, but I knew that if I wanted to improve, I had to overcome my shyness. I had to be brave and take risks. I had to be willing to make mistakes and learn from them. One thing that helped me was positive self-talk. Whenever I felt nervous about speaking, I would tell myself, it's okay to make mistakes. Everyone makes mistakes. That's how we learn. This positive self-talk gave me the courage to speak up. My friends and family also played a big role in helping me overcome shyness. They were very supportive and encouraging. They never laughed at my mistakes. Instead, they praised my efforts and progress. Their encouragement made me feel more confident. I also set small, achievable goals for myself. Instead of trying to speak perfectly right away, I focused on small steps. My first goal was to answer a simple question in English. How are you? I am fine. Once I achieved that, I set a new goal to have a short conversation in English. What is your name? My name is Alex. Where are you from? I am from Brazil. These small goals helped me build confidence gradually. As I practiced more, I noticed that my shyness started to fade. I became more comfortable speaking in English. I realized that most people were kind and patient. They wanted to help me succeed. This realization made it easier for me to speak up. I also learned to laugh at my mistakes. When I said something wrong, I would laugh and correct myself. Oops. I meant to say, she is my friend, not she is a friend of me. Laughing at my mistakes made the learning process more enjoyable. It also showed others that I was not afraid to try and fail. Another thing that helped me overcome shyness was participating in group activities. In my language exchange group, we had group discussions and games. Speaking in a group was less intimidating than speaking one-on-one. -on -one. It gave me the chance to listen to others and learn from them. 
It also gave me the opportunity to speak without feeling too much pressure. Over time, I became more confident. I realized that speaking English was not about being perfect. It was about communicating and connecting with others. I focused on the message I wanted to convey rather than the mistakes I might make. This shift in mindset made a big difference. Now, I can speak English with confidence. I am not afraid to make mistakes because I know they are part of the learning process. I enjoy speaking with others and learning from them. I am proud of how far I have come. If you are shy about speaking English, remember that it's okay to make mistakes. Everyone makes mistakes when they are learning something new. Be kind to yourself and celebrate your progress. Set small, achievable goals and practice regularly. Surround yourself with supportive people who encourage you. Over time, you will become more confident. You can do it, just like I did. Chapter 4 Reading and Listening After Building My Vocabulary and Practicing Basic Sentences I wanted to improve my reading and listening skills. Reading children's books was a great way to start. They were written in simple language, which made them easy to understand. The colorful pictures also helped me connect words to images, reinforcing my learning. The first children's book I read was about a cat and a mouse. The sentences were short and the words were familiar. The cat sees the mouse. The mouse runs away. I read each sentence carefully looking at the pictures to help me understand the story. It was exciting to read a book in English and understand it. This small achievement gave me a sense of accomplishment and motivated me to keep reading. I continued to read more children's books. Some were about animals, while others were about everyday activities. One book was about a boy's day at the park. The boy plays with his friends, they fly a kite. They eat ice cream. These simple stories were relatable and easy to follow. Reading them helped me practice new words and sentence structures in a fun way. As I read more, I noticed that my reading speed improved. At first, I read slowly, sounding out each word. But with practice, I began to recognize words more quickly. I could read sentences without pausing to think about each word. This made reading more enjoyable and less tiring. My favorite book was about a little girl who loved to bake cookies. The girl mixes flour and sugar. She adds chocolate chips. She bakes the cookies in the oven. The story was delightful, and the illustrations were charming. Reading about the girl's adventures in the kitchen made me want to try baking cookies myself. Reading children's books also improved my comprehension skills. I learned to understand the main idea of a story and to pick out important details. I practiced summarizing the stories in my own words. This helped me think about what I had read and reinforced my understanding. To make reading even more enjoyable, I joined a book club at school. The club was for students learning English. We met once a week to read books together and discuss them. Each week, we chose a new book to read. During our meetings, we took turns reading aloud. This was a great way to practice pronunciation and fluency. After reading, we talked about the story. What did we like about it? Who was our favorite character? What did we learn? These discussions were fun and engaging. They helped me see different perspectives and think more deeply about the stories. They also gave me the confidence to share my thoughts in English. Listening to English songs was another enjoyable way to improve my language skills. Music made learning fun and helped me practice listening and pronunciation. The melodies and rhythms made the words easier to remember. I started with simple songs like Twinkle Twinkle Little Star and Mary Had a Little Lamb. 
These nursery rhymes were easy to understand and sing along with Twinkle Twinkle Little, Star How I Wonder What You Are. The repetitive lyrics helped reinforce the words in my mind. Singing along improved my pronunciation and made learning feel like a game. As I grew more comfortable with simple songs, I moved on to pop music. I listened to songs by popular artists like Taylor Swift and Ed Sheeran. Their songs had catchy tunes and relatable lyrics. You belong with me. I'm in love with the shape of you. I found myself humming the melodies throughout the day. To make the most of my listening practice, I looked up the lyrics to the songs. Reading the lyrics while listening helped me understand the words better. I highlighted new vocabulary and phrases. For example, in the song Shape of You, I learned phrases like the club isn't the best place to find a lover. Understanding these phrases in context helped me remember them. I also used apps and websites that provided lyrics and translations. These tools were helpful for understanding songs with more complex lyrics. They allowed me to see how words and phrases were used in different contexts. I could sing along and follow the lyrics in real time. One of my favorite activities was karaoke. I found karaoke versions of my favorite songs on YouTube. Singing along with the music and lyrics on the screen was a fun way to practice. It helped me improve my pronunciation and timing. Sometimes, I would invite friends over for a karaoke night. We sang our favorite songs together and had a great time. Listening to songs also exposed me to different accents and styles of English. I listened to songs by artists from different countries. This helped me get used to hearing English spoken in various ways. It broadened my understanding of the language and made me more adaptable. Music became a big part of my daily routine. I listened to songs while doing homework, exercising, and relaxing. The more I listened, the more familiar English sounded. It became a natural part of my environment. I even started to dream in English which was a sign that my language skills were improving. Watching English cartoons and shows was another effective way to improve my listening skills. Cartoons were particularly helpful because they were designed for children. The language was simple and the characters spoke clearly. The visual context made it easier to understand what was happening. My favorite cartoon was Peppa Pig. The episodes were short and filled with everyday situations. Peppa goes to the park. She plays with her friends. They jump in muddy puddles. The stories were easy to follow, and the characters' expressions and actions helped me understand the dialogue. I watched the episodes repeatedly, which helped reinforce the vocabulary and phrases. Another cartoon I enjoyed was Dora the Explorer. Dora spoke both English and Spanish, which was helpful for learning new words. Hola, I'm Dora. Let's go on an adventure. Each episode involved solving problems and finding clues. The interactive nature of the show made it engaging. Dora often asked questions and paused for the viewer to respond. Can you say map? This interaction made me feel like I was part of the adventure. As I became more confident, I started watching shows with more complex language. Sesame Street was a great choice. The characters introduced new words and concepts in a fun way. The skits and songs were entertaining and educational. I learned about numbers, letters, and everyday objects. Today's show is brought to you by the letter A and the number 5. To improve my listening comprehension, I use subtitles. Watching shows with English subtitles helped me match the spoken words to their written forms. It was like reading and listening at the same time. If I didn't understand a word, I could pause and look it up. This method helped me learn new vocabulary and understand the context in which it was used. I also watched shows with my family. 
we would choose a cartoon or a children's show and watch it together. After the show, we discussed what we had watched. What did you think of the episode? What was your favorite part? These discussions helped me practice speaking and expressing my thoughts in English. It was a fun way to reinforce what I had learned. Sometimes I watched the same episode multiple times. Each time, I understood a little more. Repetition helped reinforce the vocabulary and phrases. I could focus on different aspects of the language, such as intonation and pronunciation. With each viewing, I felt more confident in my listening skills. Watching shows also helped me understand different cultural contexts. I learned about holidays, traditions, and everyday life in English-speaking countries. This cultural knowledge made the language feel more relevant and interesting. It also helped me understand the humor and references in the shows.